I'm here with uh, David Testo, talking to him today, a couple of days after you officially come out. Um, was being gay an issue as a soccer player, as a professional soccer player? Uh, yeah, it was. Really? And, and it was never an issue um, with a lot of my teammates or uh, my organizations. It was more an issue with myself, I think. However, as you can see, not a lot of sports athletes go public about being gay. And it's because you actually put um, a bit of a target on your back for ri ridicule. I have received tons of support and I've received emails from other athletes uh, that are struggling with the same issue. And it just proves to me that they're out there and they are struggling with it and I wasn't the only one. Did you ever date anyone in the league or anyone you played with? No. Really? No. Never? No. Never. Never. So there's no, there's no, so there's no gay men at all in like the soccer league in any capacity. I'm, not, I'm curious. Right. That's yeah. I'm, me I don't too. Want you, I don't want you to out anyone. Yeah. I'm just asking though. Did yeah. you ever like? You never. So you never dated anyone who's an athlete like that. No. No. To be honest, I started playing professional and ten years ago in the MLS for three years and then Vancouver, then here, and I have not met one other gay soccer player, and not even heard of one other gay soccer player, and that's the total truth. Is that physically possible? No, it's not. And it goes to show where we are in this kind of, you know, genre, like in sports, how, how, how far we need to go. Well, you're only the third, but you're really kind of in this era, like the first in North America. Mm -hmm. So was this something that you had in your mind? Like, do I really want to take the step? Mm -hmm. Do I really want to be stigmatized and, and tagged as not just an athlete, mm -hmm. but as a gay athlete? Right. I did think about that a little bit. Like I said before, I'm in a, a, a point in my life where I'm completely okay with myself and I accept it. And I think that I've dealt with the, the hard part about coming out and being gay just in the, in the sense of playing against other athletes who know. Were you at all a victim of homophobia in some way? Were, were ever, do you think? Uh, on the field? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. were? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, at some point, um, the word spread around the league. And to be honest, in the moment, uh, in a game when it's an incredibly high you know, level and competition and pressure that, of course, you know, statements would come out like that and, and name calling. Earlier in my career, it really affected me because I don't know if you remember when Zidane, uh, someone called Zidane's um, a mother insult and it really offended him and he headbutted the guy. Well, basically every time someone called me you know, a faggot or, or gay or something you know, derogative on the field, it's different than calling a straight guy that because it actually hits home to me. And I learned to basically deal with that uh, by not reacting and basically giving them the, a different reaction than they, than they would think. And I would always help them up off the field. I would give them a pat on the back. You know, I would say thank you. One of the things about being an athlete, of course, is, is the change room dynamic. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, was that ever an issue for you? Like, mm -hmm. like oh my God, I gotta make sure not to look at anyone. You know, just look at the ground. But you know what, because you don't want people, right. I'm guessing, to think, oh, this guy's checking me out. Of course right. he's gay. Right. Is that, was that ever a play or? or right. Well, to be honest, I never spoke about this. <laughs> but uh, it, it was uncomfortable quite a lot in the locker room. Not because I think the guys were uncomfortable with me. I just never wanted to make anyone else uncomfortable. And I was aware of that, you know? Uh, I want to say all of the guys, you never said anything or had an issue with it. It was probably my own, you know, self, uh, self thoughts. But you get to a point where exactly what you said, like I didn't want to make anyone else uncomfortable. So I always did what I had to do to kind of make that happen. And, and if it was looking down or walking in a different direction or, you know, showering after everyone else like I, I knew that I was always conscious of that always conscious of that did you ever like because as, as a professional athlete you have functions to attend and I'm always right. curious I see this with celebrities all the time mm. have a beard or someone you right. go with that's a friend that was kind of not really a friend it was like a girl that you went with her did you have to do that a little bit yeah <laughs> really yeah all these things that you're speaking about uh, ring true because when I was coming out uh, 
even when I wasn't out to my family, I would always, you know, bring a girl home or, you know, always tell my mom I was out with this girl or that girl. And, and, and the girl was always just a friend of mine. And they were, they were, like you said, usually a beard. And so much goes into a season. And usually we're, we're traveling a lot and we're away. And um, there's a lot that takes place at, at the home and the support. And so when you win like an MVP award or you win a championship like that, so much goes into that, just not just the plane and, and the support behind it. So in that moment when you're able to thank, you know, the one person that has basically helped you through this whole thing, but you can't, that's when it really hit me like, boom, like, wow, you're really not living your true self. You're really not able to uh, thank the one person that has basically helped you win this, win this title, win this uh, award. 15 years ago, if you were to see yourself, and hear about this, you know, athlete you knew about mm -hmm. as a soccer fan came out. Do you think it would have helped you? 100%. Really? Yeah, yeah, I really do. I think that, like I said, the more that come out, the more it will normalize it and the more it will influence the younger generation. Uh, and since right now there's not many at all, you know, like you said, three, I think it shows that, you know, at least we're heading in the right direction.